the big first preseason scrimmage, uh, spring scrimmage for uh, Texas happened yesterday. Uh, we saw a bunch of different reports come out of it because it was not open to the public, was not open to media. Uh, just some families and, of course, some VIPs were in there. So, you, you know, some things got out. Sark did talk to the media yesterday. We couldn't get the sound for you yesterday because he started it right about the same time we started the show, so we couldn't get it for you. But we do have some sound from Sark today telling us uh, kind of what his viewpoints were of the scrimmage. And we'll start off with his opening statement. It's a little lengthy, but it is explaining basically who he thought was good, what he got out of it. We'll get through that first, and then we'll move on to some other pieces here from Sark. This is from Sark yesterday to, is addressing the media, talking about uh, the beginning of the scrimmages for spring. A little bit. As a yeah, I'll, I'll kind of recap the scrimmage in a little bit as it pertained to today's practice. So, I, first of all, I thought it was a very good first scrimmage for us. Um, it was highly competitive. Uh, you know, one thing you always are concerned about going into a first scrimmage is a tackling, um, and I felt like we tackled pretty good for our first scrimmage. I mean, I felt like we we got people on the ground. Obviously, in the open field, we have some pretty elusive guys that can create some explosive plays, uh, but it wasn't just a, an enormous amount of missed tackle. So I'm confident about that too. To come out of that thing injury free is always a positive for me. Like you know, last year we know we lost a couple of guys for the season in that first scrimmage. Um, so that's always a concern. You know, I, I think a couple of things, you know, critically that I, that I talked to the team about first is, you know, we're in really good condition, right? We're, we, our guys can run, they're in great shape, but there's a difference of being able to run. And there's a difference of being in game shape. Um, you know, games last three and a half hours, right? You know, with, but when you're in the locker room and sideline and back in, and we have to condition ourselves better for that. And what I mean by that is, maintaining a level of consistency in our play, maintain, maintaining the mental intensity needed in the second half into the fourth quarter, maintaining that focus uh, so that we don't have some of the breakdowns that we didn't have early in the, in the, in the scrimmage. So that's something that we worked on today um, with the guys, and, and they really responded well. I told them today I was really proud of them, just the way they responded to um, – how taxing it was going in the afternoon and, and practicing for a little over two hours in the heat. And, and I thought the, the last period was really well done by them. Well, uh, offensively, you know, naturally there's always things you, you want to clean up coming out of a scrimmage, you know, for us, pre-snap penalties, you know, we need to improve, you know, we, we were not clean, uh, you know, pre-snap as you, as you guys know, we, we like to motion and shift and do different things before that ball snapped. And, too many, you know, just false starts, the illegal procedure stuff that, that we can clean up. Um, you know, three turnovers Saturday, I, I think in just about 130 plays, um, which is which is too many um, for the offense. And so understanding the value of the football, but on the flip side, that's a real credit to the defense in creating those turnovers, okay? Um, an area where I know we can improve defensively is, you know, we're really making it a point to get after the quarterback and, and we're seeing the effect of that. But we still have to understand our rush lanes, especially on third down. And so uh, that is definitely an area for us to clean up and, and, and try to minimize some of the quarterback scrambles that, that came into having big plays uh, on Saturday. But just some young guys that, that kind of stood out to me. Jelani McDonald has continued to impress, uh, has been impressive. Derek Williams, uh, Anthony Hill, uh, Manny Muhammad had a nice day. And a guy that we don't we – don't, uh, mentioned quite as much in that backfield. Trey Wisner had a good day, not only at running back, but on special teams. And I thought some guys that, you know, sometimes get overlooked from spring ball. And then we talk about our returning kind of star players and then our new players, our new faces. But we had some guys that uh, have made real strides that I'm proud of. I think Arch has really stepped his game up. He's playing at a high level. Uh, I think Justice Finkley is playing good football for us. You know, he's in year two, right? And, and he's playing well. Um, I think Jare Blitzo, which we touched on last week. I think Gunnar Helm is playing very good football for us at tight end. And I think DJ Campbell uh, is doing some nice things up front on the offensive line. So, um, you know, like I said, it was a good scrimmage Saturday, but as, as good as that was, I love the way they responded today uh, to, a, to a tough practice and um, us still finishing the way that we did was impressive. All right, there we go. Lots to get into in that first segment. That was kind of the opening and, and just his take on what happened at the scrimmage on Saturday. First and foremost, the injury free is what he started off with. Always great to see, uh, you know, 
Texas come out healthy. We know that Jordan Whittington left the game, heard it was nothing major. Uh, he's He was playing. He was practicing yesterday. Xavier Worthy was not part of the scrimmage. Uh, that was due to illness. He is apparently back uh, taking reps. So great to see. And it's something he's talked about in previous press conferences is that this season, because there's just kind of this renewed sense of that there is depth, that there is a feeling of, hey, man, if you don't play at a high enough level, like we're all trying to help. We're all trying to win, right? Everybody's on the same page. But there's people behind you now that I feel that people are, you know, there's just another step in your preparation day to day that may help you prevent an injury by getting there early to work out a little bit more and do a little bit more in the stretching because you know, hey, man, even if I'm out three practices, that may be enough to lose me some playing time and I want to keep my position. So I think there is something to be said about getting a, a feel for the team this season that you need to be in the best condition of your life. You need to take the extra time and get into the game shape, which is what he talks about in there. You need to be able to get into the conditioning and get the stretching and spend the time to be the player you want to be because you know there is now depth at Texas, which there hasn't been for a while. And it may not be the depth they need. They may need more, and you know that's why the recruiting classes are so big that Sark is still pulling in because you're going to the SEC next season and you're going to need more depth. And you know once you start now getting some draft picks going out and you start seeing some guys leaving, you're going to need to replace that. So those those top five recruiting classes has to, have to keep coming, right? But until then, while you're building it, to finally have a little bit of depth at this Texas team in the wide receiver room, in the in the defensive backs room, in, in the quarterback room. You know, the O-line room starting to get depth, which, I mean, the O-line, we didn't even necessarily have a full, great offensive line. Now they're starting to see, okay, maybe maybe these offensive linemen are realizing, hey, man, maybe I should, you know, make sure I'm, I'm watching what I'm eating, and I can still eat good, I can still eat plenty, but maybe I just need to watch, maybe I need to make sure that I'm getting that cardio in that I hate because it's a thankless position and my knees hurt and everything else. All of that stuff comes with trying to build a winning culture around a team and the more good players you have, the more stress it puts on everybody to bring their A game. And that leads into less injuries in, in some cases. Now, some are just unavoidable. So there is no perfect way to do it. But the more depth you have means the more that players may put that extra effort in to stretch it out and to hydrate and to do everything right so that they don't get off the field and they keep playing the game. He goes into game shape which we know the conditioning has been things, what we just talked about, conditioning, but the game shape. And what he really leads into is, hey, man, the, those third and fourth quarter, those times that we've, that we've lost games, and now Sark has to realize he's a big part, a big, big part of those third and fourth quarter meltdowns. A big part of that is Sark. And he, we won't know that until, until game time, right? Because he can't really, in a scrimmage, tell us how he's changing his play calling and, and all that. He's mentioned it. I'm going to say that he understands. I'm going to say that he understands that it's a problem for him and he needs to address it. Now, whether he does or not, that becomes a harder part. It's very hard to look in the mirror sometimes and you can say, hey, man, you know, I have a, I have a fear of failure, which makes me not take chances. Well, are you going to take that chance? No, I'm afraid I'm going to fail. Doesn't You know it, it's still not going to help you. That is something that he understands, hey, I have to. I have to be able to help and have to be able to play, call plays in a better way. Is it getting other guys to help? Is it getting in some other coaches that maybe help me prepare a little bit differently? And is it me thinking differently when I'm on the field? He won't be able to do that when he gets there, but the players will be able to fix their problems of not being able to be physically ready. Depth helps with able to be substitutions in that third and fourth quarter. And what he talks about there as well is pre-snap penalties, which really comes down to focus. It comes down to focus. And that is something that at any level is very hard to do and very hard to coach and very hard to implement, especially when you're talking about teams that maybe it's not in week one when you're playing Rice and you have Alabama next week. That's that focus. Can you focus enough to not have those silly penalties? When you're playing Alabama and you know your, your family's in the crowd and you know that girl you like is in the crowd and you know, are you able to focus enough so that when the play is being called out, you're listening to everything you need to be doing and the pre-snap and you can remember and can you focus on that level to not have costly penalties when you know you're going to be playing in some key games and in third 
third and fourth quarter, man, a five, 10 yard penalty can really, really cost you. And if it shortens up a drive and that defense gets just a quick little water break and it's hot like it is today, and he's going to have to go, and the, that defense doesn't get a rest, and those big guys have to get right back out on the field because you just, you weren't ready and you weren't focused and you thought, man, the ball's not going to me. They're not even going on my side of the field. I know what the play call is. It's going the other way. I don't care. I'm going to go jog out to my side, and I line up a little bit off. And Quinn Ewers is worried about whatever he's doing, and everybody's worried, and they don't see you, and you get it, and ref sees you. Boom. Fifteen five-yard penalty. Instead of a third and three, it's a third and eight. Changes the play up. Changes what the defense can do. Changes up everything. And it was just a lack of focus on someone that the play's not even involving, really. But every play involves you. Those are the types of things that you cannot have in key situations. And I think that was a key factor of what he said was in practice on Monday. That goes on the defensive side as well when he talks about the third down defense uh, of a team when you know you're going to be playing some other big schools. And, and, you know, we know Texas Tech is that last game of the season. And, man, there's going to be a lot of distractions. We hope a lot of distractions for Texas at the end of the season because if there's not distractions, well, there's look, there's going to be distractions. Either they suck and they, they lose three games, and I get sucking and losing three games, not saying that. But if you lose three games before you get to the last game of the season, you are, you're underachieving for this team right now, right? So if you say that's the distraction, if they lost three or four games, and that's the distraction. The people are now wondering what's going to happen, and they're going to the SEC, and they're going to be eaten alive. That. Or you're playing great. You've lost one game maybe. And you're going into that Texas Tech game. And your distractions are, man, are we, are we in the college football playoff talks? Are we playing for the Big 12 championship? What are we doing next? And they start picking up fourth downs on you, and you drop that game because your focus disappears on third and fourth down because you say all we got to do is stop one thing. And in today's football, there's seven things happening on a decent team. Those are the focus that is necessary to be drilled into the heads of these players. Sark talks about, in this, about practicing in the afternoon today and the different practice times. Sark talked about the practice times yesterday as well. I'll let you tell you what he says. I'll tell you what you think. Well, my, my thing is, you know, I don't get to pick our game times, unfortunately, or I'd we'd be kicking off at about 8.30 a.m. because that's when we go in the season. But because of that, I, I'm, I really feel like I, I have to expose our guys to the different times and the different body clock times for them. So we've been going it a couple times. At, you know, we're going to go tomorrow night about 7.30. We're going, we've gone a few times here at 2.30 in the middle of the day. We've scrimmaged, uh, you know, at about by the time the scrimmage gets kicked off uh, just before 11 a.m., which we know 11 a.m. games come around. So I'm trying to expose them to all that, knowing starting on Monday when school starts, we're going to be in the morning. And, and that's that's what we got. And I, I don't really get to adjust that. So I'm trying to take these weeks now without school of adjusting some of our practice times to, one, expose them to different times. But two, how do I maximize their rest between practices, right? Um, I would never practice in the afternoon or in the evening and then come back and practice them in the morning, right? So I'm always trying to find, you know, a, a span where I can get their recovery done. And I think it's been helpful. Um, our guys have really bought into recovery and what that looks like from a hydration standpoint, from what they're eating to how they're sleeping. Um, and we've really, this has been our best year of minimizing some of the soft tissue issues that we've kind of had in the past. So another part in there he mentions about moving, and there's two great parts about moving practices around like this. And, and I mean, it is somewhat all in your head. It is, you know, a, a chance to kind of be able to give them a extremely hot practice and then give them an easier one where it's not, you know, you're able to give them two different levels where you're not necessarily trying to do the, hey, man, we're going to run you till you puke old school philosophy of football, which so many people are a fan of but it doesn't seem to get you a ton of wins in today's game. It worked back then, but that's a different world. That was when you could have more practices with helmets, and you could kind of build up those physical calluses. They don't allow you to have the amount of practices because those long-term causes more issues, and the NCAA and college football as a whole doesn't want more stories of long-term massive uh, injuries to college football players. So you change up what you're doing. You don't – I get it. And that's it's probably a good thing. But one of the other factors of when you talk about that focus and the routine of a game is when you have practice at the same time every day, the routine falls into your daily routine. 
and it can fall into, hey, man, every day I wake up at at 6 a.m. And at 6.15, I'm eating breakfast. And at 6.25, I'm in the shower. And by and 6.50, I'm in my car and driving to practice. And at 7 o'clock, I'm doing my stretch. And you have that routine. But the time is the time. So now when you have a game day and you're on the road or wherever else, your time's a little bit off and it's the routine falls off. So when you start to have routines of in-game routines, to be able to move them around in practice and start to get mind, guys' mindset in the right sense of, no, you need to be focused from three hours before the game. Not from 7 a.m. Not from You need to be focused from three hours before the game when you start or four hours or whatever it is. You need to have that focus and you need to know how to ramp your body up and not do it by a clock so much, but by just the feel like you should be able to do this naturally. And by moving the practices, by getting you to feel, okay, well, uh, you know, I know if we're playing a 7 o'clock game, I need to prepare slightly differently than if I'm playing an 11 a.m. game because my body's given up on me in the third and fourth quarter and then late in the practice. My body's given up on me. Hey, man, I'm seeing that I, my hydration changes, so I need to be able to change up somewhat of my pregame routine. All of those things are big pre- are big positives of when you do this now if you oversell it then you get people to think that okay we're ready we can play in anything and that's just never the case because you're not going to be playing in austin texas every game and the weather is going to change and there's dry heat and the in the you're going to houston and and you, you know there's just you know and then we need to get into the cold it becomes a completely different thing so you're not prepared for everything but to change up the mindset of a routine not being a based on a clock routine but based on a system and a feeling and being going like that is a different process for a team to be able to help you try and play on the road some help you try and change up and be a more consistent focused team which is what Sark is trying very hard to implement right now he wants to implement I need you guys to 100% be there for me in the third and fourth quarter because I don't know if I will be I'm trying guys Sark says he wants to be there in the third and fourth quarter. Sark says he wants to be calling the right plays. Sark says he wants to make the right adjustments. But we can't know that. So you guys have to be as good as you can be to hopefully make up for any shortcomings in the play calling. And if it's not the right play, man, you because you had Bijan and Rojo last year, and man, the amount of broken tackle rates and guys getting hit behind the line two yards and still getting a, a forward play, that's gone this year. And I get Jonathan Brooks is going to be good. He talks about the short yardage and running backs. We can play that in a little bit. But the ability to be focused and prepared for four quarters, no matter what, I don't care if you're up 60 to zero against Rice or you're down by 24 against Alabama. I don't think they will be, but I, I don't care. I don't care either way. I need 100% focus. I need 100% for four quarters. That's been a problem. Sark talked about, too, the second half of the scrimmage, the second half of practice, and what he wants to see in exactly this sense. Talking to the media yesterday, Sark. It wasn't so much the play. You know, I try to simulate, um, when we scrimmage, I try to simulate what would be a first half, and then we really, we actually take a halftime, and we go, we go, we don't go all the way to the locker room, but we go to the tunnel, and we'll take about eight minutes, and then we come back out, and we start with our special teams, and then we go again. And I just didn't quite feel our energy right when we kind of came out for what would have been the third quarter, which we have to get trained to do. Um, And then what I didn't like was not that it was about the physical conditioning of what we were about. There were too many mental lapses late where same calls, just like there were earlier in the game, but that mental fatigue of it, it lasts longer staying focused, keeping your mental intensity to remain consistent. And so that's what I was stressing upon the guys. And so that's why we kind of structured practice the way we did today. And like I said, I thought today was much better. So that's as much as this on me as it is on them as a coach of putting them in those situations to get them comfortable uh, handling it. Do you remember how many times last year we saw Sark in the tunnel trying so hard to get his guys amped up? Or we saw Coach Steven yelling at a guy, a, t- a TV guy, <laughs> at the at the Alamo Bowl, but we saw Sark trying so hard to get his guys amped up because he's like, I need everything out of you. This seems to be that he has realized, man, I need to start this ramp up stuff earlier and earlier every year. I need to get these guys amped up and going because it, when I try and tell them what I'm telling them in the, the tunnel, it's too late. So I need to get them amped up and understand how important this second half is for this Texas team this year. 
how important this second half is for Texas to be successful this season. Sark knows it. You can tell. That's what he's talking about. All these clips are him saying this second half is where we fell short. He said in previous clips, my play calling in the second half and our strategy, it seems to be good in the first half. The, the, what, we, what we work on seems to be okay. He knows. He's aware that Texas has had issues in the second half of ball games. Every national media person can tell you that Texas has faults in the second half of ball games, and they show up short in some big games, and that's why they don't get picked better. Sark knows this. So he has to say there's certain things we have to fix, and I need all of your intensities and focus to be that much bigger.